Hello, welcome to Wrestling in Mom's Basement. This is going to be the Monday Night War Retro Review for May 13th, 1996. I, of course, am Patrick Young. This gentleman to my right is my co-host, Joe Venuto. Uh, roll episode 159 on this came from the Semigolor Tournament of Sioux City, Iowa. Vincent informed the viewers, sorry, Wolf, that Ahmed Johnson won the first round Kuwait Cup Tournament. And that means... He beat... Aldo Montoya, Steve Austin, Alan Horn, Triple H to win. That means about as much as Braun Strowman being the Saudi Arabia champion. Uh, Ahmed Johnson defeated Zip to start us off on roll with Skip and Sunday in three minutes. Ahmed got entering the back and Sunny shows up, offered to oil him up. He calls her trash and declines. Next day, Sunny did distraction. The, bo the body dons pull off twin magic. Even you know they aren't twins. <laughs> yeah. The dumbass referee was clueless. They worked him over a bit, but backfired to skip He's a pro or punch, and Ahmed wins. Yeah, that that was kind of a dumb thing in the match. Uh, Zip looks nothing like Skip, and vice versa. Uh, Min minus the short blonde hair. Uh, then there was an ad. A non peeing Ultimate Warrior hosted a commercial for Warrior University, claiming his direction and curriculum can make you a WWF superstar. Okay. Uh, they were just uh, I don't think there's ever, ever been a famous student from the Warrior University, so <laughs> those are lies. Uh, they were Jim Cornette defeat Duke Jersey in five minutes. Jim Cornette joined contact to make jokes and pull a little compare rematch between Vader and Yokozuna. Vader starts hot, but then Jersey begins a small rally going to the break. Thor and Doug, Vader sends into the steps twice. It was hard to take Duke seriously when Vince was shouting, can the dumpster, can the dumpster come back? Why was he just calling the dumpster? Uh, he, uh, he, again, was saying some of Vader's outfits. The dumpster outfits. fire of Jersey. <laughs> he then was saying some of Vader's outfits and comes back. Um, Duke goes up and misses a splash. Vader hits the Vader bomb and that's a wrap. Uh, yeah, there was also something in the match where Vince tried to get over the fact that if you have Vader on the defensive, he's not as unstoppable. Oh, yeah. Why they decided to test that with dump, dump the, uh, Duke the Dumpster Jersey, I have no fucking idea. Yeah, uh, Way too was, much for him. Yeah, way too much from Duke here, Pajari, and, uh, yeah, they should just squash him with ease. Exactly. Uh, next week, Steve Olsen versus Mark Miro. One, two, three, kid takes on Saga Vega, and the British Bulldog goes one moment with Jake Roberts. Uh, Vince McMahon comes to Ducks and Ring Area with Undertaker and Paul Vera. Paul shrieks while talking about Goldust. This brings out Goldust more leaning to interrupt Undertaker's slope. It was kind of a drabby promo. Yeah. He is ready to the mind games with Undertaker. What clones that in Bomb and Fool with number five? Uh, he starts feeling Undertaker and he says if he knows that, that Rear Morris is. Undertaker overpowers some job into the map. Mankind runs in, clocks the Taker from behind. The mandible claw again takes Undertaker way down. And knocks him out. That leaves Goldust free to straw Undertaker in suggestive ways. He sticks next to him and blows a kiss to Marlena. Undertaker sits up and sends Goldust scouting. Yeah. I liked most of this segment. Yeah. Uh, Preferably after Goldust came out. Yeah. Uh, just a whole brashful with Uncle Zebekai defeated Alabama Toy in, in three minutes. By the way, WWF was it doing so hot from a financial standpoint here. Yet they gave Alabama Toy a pyro. The Portuguese man of war, you don't know. Yeah, see all of old people. Zebekai hops all commentary said that Brash will have a big nineteen ninety six. Maybe even bigger than Shawn Michaels. Uh Brashel runs him over with a clothesline to win while Zeb or guys is on commentary. And Aldo goes brand as well. Yeah, it was pretty much just an extended squash. Uh and Kuwait Vince and Ari some footage from Daniel's recent tour. It ends by showing Bulldog attack Sean on the beach and nearly drowning him. If anyone should know about attacks <laughs> ambushes on a beach, it's definitely British Bulldog. <laughs> I don't know about you, it came off his old horse. It did. <laughs> oh, okay. But, but think about my joke for a second. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Him and Sting were on yeah. a beach yes. with orphans playing volleyball. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, the same came off his old horse to me. Sting almost got blown <laughs> up by a bomb placed by a one-eyed midget. Isn't that bad with a really thick, deep pound into it? Uh, I mean, that non title W, non title match, they share Shawn Michaels with Jose Lothario. The feet harm herself in 13 minutes. 
no one with the future holds for these two actually as interest here. Yeah. A Royal and Hunter have wrestled Sean in a few stations. Clearly frustrated Shane, but worse also Sean has had no hold over accusations of getting to his head. He takes over to break game, stops at Fort with Triple H's at uh, yeah, Hunter's Hunter's random valet in the ring. Uh he brings Hunter from the apron with a headlock and Hunter's laser drape on the ropes. When official calls for the break, he lets go of Hunter falls face first into the mat. Sean misses a corner splash, Triple H deals a run, Nate Sean is born a happy bubble round for his buddy. For the first time in a long time, Mr. Perfect is on the roll. As he strolls out to watch the match, another break is by Hunter to be on Sean Corner. Trillage works the heat now, Sean gets a few hope spots that Trillage cuts off. This goes through a third commercial break. And now Trillage is trying to put Sean to sleep. HK rallies, counters the pedigree with a slingshot. Fly for him and keep up time, Sean has switched the music and now is the victory. Match of the week. Yeah, uh, uh match of the two. Yeah, uh, just a good solid honor from, from the two. Uh, you can definitely see Sean was a little bit more generous with his own buddy at this point. Uh, Triple H looked good, and Sean, if you give him time, he, he can put in a great performance. Yeah, it was a really good main event this week. Uh, Sean has worked with Bruce Sean, and was the only kind to make sure his friend looked great. You can tell there's more potential for these two. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Bull gets an interview after the match, and I, I don't know about Pat, but I can I barely understood what he was saying. Uh, I believe he threatens Sean if he shows up during his match next week, I think. I, I think. Yeah, I, I, uh, Nitro, right, uh, from the Monsupial or, or Torium in Nitro, Tennessee, right off the bat. Monsupial. Monsupial. Mon. Municipal. No, that sounds like <laughs> that. Not kangaroos, <laughs> municipal. Yeah, the Monsupial. Meaning the, something with the city, is it? <laughs> right off the bat, the contract tells us. Lex Luger's here for a title shot, and then they actually cut the Luger, uh, came it out in a lawn chair, and with a blanket overnight outside the arena. Uh, okay. <laughs> don't you think someone will let him in? <laughs> Damn, isn't he the number one, cont number one contender? Yes. Uh, the Steinbrugs defeat Paul Gemini, six minutes to start off. Scott shows off his power quickly and press lands rock and rock into the charging giant grunge. Things break down all four men on the outside. Back inside, Rocco gives a delayed reaction to Rick Cannon ropes and gets crushed on top. Scott comes in and starts suplexing and lets your drop from grunge. Uh, and a diving headbutt swing the pendulum in Paul McGammon's favor. They actually did a cool, uh, like, assisted somersault spot, I think, from yeah. that guy. I think it was Giant did to Rocco. That guy, too. Bischoff announced, announces I should move to two hours. Come up soon. Rocco actually flips on the grunge outside and he's a Frank Siren inside to end it. Uh, this, um, was, this was actually my match of the night. On. Yeah, I thought this was the best match on Nature Night 2. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah, just just not not as good as their past match. I'm going to say it was like a month, month ago. ago. Yeah, we're just a brawl, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought this one was, was decent enough. Yeah, a pretty good time work here. Uh, Paul McGammy bumped around and did some of their fancy offense. Before a fall to the team higher on the card. Uh, Chris Benoit defeat Dave Taylor in four minutes up next. I'm not sure if this is 96. Nitro or 2006 SmackDown. Uh, Belfast Bruiser went back to Ireland after losing the park lot. Brawl won't be a slam race, so Taylor will replace him as Regal's partner. It works out for Regal since Dave is his, is his employee, I believe. Yes. Benoit is in control, but Dave just stomps on his face. Dave bumps ugly for a slingshot, so Benoit chops him up. Outside Taylor is the upper ton double action. on Mongo gets up to interview the rider in Macho Man just before Benoit wins with a dragon suplex. Uh, not not as good as this one could have been, uh, but I think it maybe maybe need a little bit more time. It was decent, but at times they felt like they weren't working the same style of match what they were going for. Mm -hmm. Miji tries to interview Macho Man by security staff Savage from Aaron in the building. Macho, Mongo comes up, shows up a custom promo on Flair, saying that he sympathizes with Savage and has a plan for Flair. Savage then hilariously tries to enter the building when Mongo goes back in. <laughs> <laughs> Blood runs cold, Glacier motherfuckers. Uh, Rick Glacier Flair. is imminent. Uh, <laughs> Flair and Elizabeth, a woman, defeat VK Wall Street in six minutes. First of all, I didn't know why this just happened. First, I thought I was done with Rotunda. Not being me, the Michael Tunda. Yeah. But it's not IRS. So, and his born self. Second, why have a top heel face a mid car heel? I have absolutely no idea. I don't know what it's going to accomplish. The famous pop after Flair does is still in their hands for 
for Vitae's offense. I did get chuckle out first. Oh god. Enter back I believe it was enter a backdrop. <laughs> and for it takes time to dance with a woman outside. They had a bull to make this lace for a commercial move, by the way. Flair starts working the leg and wraps around the repose. The third floor I leverage, mind you, from woman that's it. Uh yeah, this this match didn't really make much sense to me why it happened. Um it it was fine for what it was, but um yeah, I just didn't get it. Yeah, it was it was a dull fear to me. It did nothing for either guy. <laughs> me, Jerry's Rick, and Ace is saying about Savage saying he's carrying Dead Man Rick as his partner in San Reed. Flair kisses up and down Elizabeth's arm, saying he's clearly alive. Chief clutches Flair for him with Dabber. And then Rick murders this program with the awesome You Dare Be a Defensive Lineman come at Joe Namath line. Direct to manga. I am being right up. They said World Tide Championship, Lex Luger defeated the Giant, the Jimmy Hart made disqualification of four minutes, finally Luger was here for a mass. So we have a lot of Nitro, but they had stay stream of World Title matches. Yeah. Rick is not ringside with the ladies at a nice dinner table. Luger does all he can, but he's overwhelmed. He finally knocks Shy off the apron, but not off of his seat. Bishop even mentions the plate in Luger's arm and how it knocked out Yokozuna. Giant takes Luger to, to Flair's table and chokes up Luger for the DQ. Uh, I won't say much about the match because it was more of an angle for the yeah, match. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it was more about the build-up between Sting and the Giant. Uh, Flair has her heels and his legs for Cal. Sting runs out to check with Luger while Bischoff talks about Luger proving that he's a stand-up guy. How did he prove that exactly? By getting chokes on through a table. Uh, that inappropriate Gene Oakland, when you were inappropriate, was you were trying to get over in with Sting while well, Sting was checking on his friend that Sting shells him down. Though he then started making, he starts making achy, bricky back jokes, and they try hammering to him as a serious deal. Uh, Roll won the ratings this night, 3.5 to Nitro's ring to a 2.3. Well, to be fair, I think Roll definitely did advertise Sean versus Triple H. Yeah, it did. Uh, for Raw, I enjoyed most of it. Uh, second half of it. I'll give it like a 6 ish, 6.5 ish. I was gonna give it like a 5, 5 and a half. It was some good, some bad this week. Uh, I was gonna be in my stands out, since it was the best match on Raw yeah. in years. Right, and featured two future Hall of Famers. And I thought the Goldust Armchair segment worked very well, and even the Brashel squash served its purpose. Uh, yeah. Vader and Alma's matches that did less for me. Yeah. Uh, the twin matches I was done when the guys don't look like and Vader's match wasn't one side enough. Uh, Nitro, I'll give it like a four. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good grade for it. It wasn't like anything was offensive on the show, but it like lacked compared to recent Nitro's. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked the, the main event angle, as has tended to be the case. I liked the angle, and the opener was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Everything else was kind of different. Flair and Vitae was just pointless. And Bill Taylor was disappointing. Yeah. And Slammery was six days away, I believe. I feel like I only know one or two matches. <laughs> I, I, a lot of these Nitros haven't really built to much there. To be fair, the, it's the Battle Bowl or That's right. whatever. Yeah. Alright. Uh, next... Our Star Series 2004 Retro Review. See you then. See you then.